All right, they're off. Uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are officially married. Uh, they've left St. George's Chapel in Windsor. Remember, they're going to take a round in that uh, open air carriage around the town of Windsor. More than 100,000 people have gathered in uh, the small town to wish the royal couple well. It was a grand ceremony that lasted just over an hour and uh, the two of them are now on their way. With us on the broadcast is Elizabeth Norton, British historian, joining us from London. Elizabeth, thank you for speaking with us here at Weon. A uh, lot of pomp, a lot of uh, glamour on display, of course, but uh, I suppose the most essential and traditional parts of the ceremony were retained uh, as expected. Absolutely. It was a, it was a very traditional ceremony, um, combined with some American aspects brought in, I assume, for the bride. Uh, were you referring to anything in specific? Are you talking about the address by the Reverend Curry, for instance? That was a bit out of the ordinary, that, I suppose. It was. I can't. I can't recall a royal wedding that has had a similar address. But it was. I thought it added a real breath of fresh air to the ceremony. It was. It was lovely to see the combination of both the British and the American traditions. Absolutely. And what happens next? Uh, we're seeing Queen Elizabeth uh, departing as well. Uh, the royal couple, of course, uh, off to uh, tour of Windsor. Uh, but what exactly happens once uh, the wedding is done and dusted? The guests will go for the wedding reception. So they will go for a, a wedding breakfast, which will be a lunch or a dinner. And they'll have a drinks reception and photographs. In the evening, there will be a more a less formal party, so a less formal reception, a party, um, which is for a smaller number of guests. So they'll be celebrating for the rest of the day. Right. And uh, we heard, of course, uh, the titles that have been announced for both of them. They'll be known as the Duke and Duchess of uh, Sussex. So what will be the official way of referring to them? Uh, I mean, if uh, Queen Elizabeth is called Her Royal Her Majesty, what would be the official way of addressing uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle from now on? They will be their royal highnesses, so it will be His Royal Highness Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, and Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Sussex. And in, addi in addition, uh, Elizabeth, if I can ask you, there was a mention of some other titles in the official announcement as well. Um, what exactly are those? Is this also as part of uh, uh, the larger realm of the British monarchy? That's right. So uh, many members of the British royal family have titles that are more relevant for Scotland, for example, because Sussex is, a Brit is an English title. Um, so they tend to have a wide range of titles, but in England at least they'll be known as Duke and Duchess of Sussex. All right. Uh, Elizabeth Norton, thank you for speaking with us. Uh, we'll get back to you in, in a bit, just uh, letting our visuals, uh, our, our viewers, pardon me, uh, get a taste of uh, some wonderful images on our screens right now. Uh, there they are, uh, the recently married royal couple, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. They've officially said, I do, the Archbishop of Canterbury overseeing uh, their wedding vows which they exchanged it was a, a, a ceremony which uh, combined both tradition and modernity a break from uh, the usual as well elizabeth norton the british historian telling us about how there were elements uh, of the american heritage of the bride that were included for instance the address by the reverend curry which was uh, perhaps a break from uh, the usual. She described it as a breath of fresh air. And of course, uh, the choice of Meghan Markle to uh, enter the chapel on her own. She took 110 steps by herself. Remember, her father was supposed to walk her down the aisle, but he's taken a turn for the, for the worse. He's not uh, been able to uh, get to the United Kingdom at all for the wedding. Uh, Prince Charles did escort Meghan Markle for the last 37 steps as she made her way over uh, to Prince Harry, but uh, significantly she was not given away by her father-in-law, uh, a choice that she made perhaps uh, for gender equality. And uh, now the two of them are going to take a round of Windsor. They're going to travel around the town. Uh, you can see there's a lot of pomp on display. Uh, Prince Harry himself wearing uh, the black frock uniform of uh, the British cavalry. Remember, he has uh, served in the military already. It was expected that he will be attired in his military uniform. Uh, there was speculation, though, of uh, which uniform he'll choose to wear. And uh, 
Meghan Markle, of course, opting for a traditional gown for her wedding. Now, uh, the gown that everyone had their eyes trained on, uh, remember, they managed to keep it a secret right up till the moment uh, she emerged from uh, the car right outside the chapel. A lot of speculation on what Meghan Markle and who Meghan Markle will choose to wear for her wedding. Well, uh, the designer is Claire Waite Keller of uh, Givenchy. She uh, designed the silk gown featuring an open baton neckline and a sculpted waist. Uh, the train, of course, uh, flowed in soft round folds and it was cushioned by an underskirt in a triple silk organza. So that was the dress uh, that Meghan Markle chose to wear by the designer Claire Waite Keller. And a little uh, interesting information that's uh, filtered in over the last hour or so about the veil that uh, Meghan Markle was wearing. Uh, Prince Harry, of course, uh, removing the veil for her ahead of the vows before they were exchanged. Now, Ms. Markle had expressed her desire to have all 53 countries of the Commonwealth come along with her for the ceremony, for, through the journey of the ceremony. And uh, this veil that was designed by Ms. Keller represented the distinctive flora of each Commonwealth country and it was uh, brought together in a floral composition, if you will. Now, there was a lot of research, obviously, that went into the designing of this veil to make sure that every single flower was unique. It was five meters long and made from silk tulle with a trim of hand-embroidered flowers in silk threads and in organza. Now, the, the flower, obviously, uh, of each country had to be worked into the veil uh, in a flat manner. It was uh, three-dimensional to create uh, a delicate design, a design that stood apart from, uh, the, uh, from the rest. And India, too, was represented uh, in those 53 nations of the Commonwealth, uh, which found representation on Meghan Markle's veil today. The Indian lotus was included in the veil. So, a little touch of uh, India in this wedding as well beyond Priyanka Chopra of course who is uh, the superstar who has uh, been invited for the wedding she was of course part of uh, the wedding today let's leave you with those visuals for a while they speak for themselves Prince uh, Harry and uh, Meghan Markle making their way around the town of Windsor as uh, the recently married royal couple So even as we're watching uh, those visuals uh, from Windsor, a quick reminder of what happened uh, about half an hour back. Uh, the visuals on your left from St. George's Chapel from the moment uh, that the ceremony began inside uh, with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Now, uh, Prince Harry, uh, a visibly emotional Prince Harry, uh, did wipe away his tears more than once. And here's uh, listening in very quickly to what happened a short while back. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. In the presence of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we have come together to witness the marriage of Henry, Charles, 
Albert, David, and Rachel Megan to pray for God's blessing on them, to share their joy, and to celebrate their love. Marriage is a gift of God in creation, through which husband and wife may know the grace of God. It is given that as man and woman grow together in love and trust, they shall be united with one another in heart, body and mind, as Christ is united with his bride, the Church. The gift of marriage brings husband and wife together in the delight and tenderness of sexual union and joyful commitment to the end of their lives. It's given as the foundation of family life in which children are born and nurtured and in which each member of the family, in good times and in bad, may find strength, companionship and comfort and grow to maturity in love. Marriage is a way of life made holy by God and blessed by the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ with those celebrating a wedding at Cana in Galilee. Marriage is a sign of unity and loyalty which all should uphold and honour. It enriches society and strengthens community. No one should enter into it lightly or selfishly, but reverently and responsibly in the sight of Almighty God. Harry and Meghan are now to enter this way of life. They will each give their consent to the other and make solemn vows and in token of this, they will each give and receive a ring. We pray with them that the Holy Spirit will guide and strengthen them, that they may fulfill God's purposes for the whole of their earthly life together. First, I am required to ask anyone present who knows a reason why these persons may not lawfully marry to declare it now. Harry and Meghan, the vows you are about to take are to be made in the presence of God. 
who is judge of all and knows all the secrets of our hearts. Therefore, if either of you knows a reason why you may not lawfully marry, you must declare it now. Harry, will you take Megan to be your wife? Will you love her, comfort her, honour and protect her? And forsaking all other, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live. I will. <laughs> Megan, will you take Harry to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honour and protect him? And forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live. I will. All right, a bit of and comic you, relief there uh, the between and Harry and, and Meghan and as they uh, quickly agreed to whatever the Archbishop asked them of ahead of the exchanging now, of the vows officially. Um, of course, uh, all of that is done. They are uh, officially husband and wife now as uh, they're heading around the long walk or the long mile as it's known in Windsor as they say uh, hello to their uh, well-wishers who've gathered there in the thousands. We're taking a quick break here on the broadcast. Uh, our coverage of the royal wedding continues, of course, on the other side. Do stay tuned. Bye-bye.